Hi everybody, how are you guys? Uh, it has been too long. I think it's been like a couple weeks. Um, yeah, I haven't crocheted really anything. I've just been working and starting work at 4 a.m. kind of puts a damper on things because I can't stay up late and crochet like I used to. But I have the weekend off and today's Friday when I'm recording this. And so I'm full of energy. Maybe it's the coffee, but I think it's just knowing that I've got a couple of days off and I am going to crochet this weekend. I'm also going to catch up on videos because I just haven't had time to watch really my crochet videos. So I'm sorry that I've been missing some of you. I um, have seen that a couple of you guys are doing, um, what's it called? Vlogmas. <laughs> <laughs> and I really can't wait to just dive in and just binge watch a bunch of crochet YouTube videos tonight. So anyway, I've been thinking about you guys. I've been thinking about crochet. The only thing I've done is I did start a corner to corner blanket. Um, and that was just so I could crochet something. But it's been a week, maybe even longer since I've even worked on it. I'll show you what it, what I've got so far, but it's really nothing. I've got my, I just stuck my hook in the scrap ball. It's a five millimeter in each hook. And it's very simple corner to corner. I started with pink because I wanted to do pink because I love pink. And um, then I'm just picking scrap balls out of a bag that I have. And this is probably gonna be a really, really big one. Um, maybe the size you could put on a bed or something. I don't know. This is just right now my mindless, I was going to say my brainless, my mindless kind of de-stress crochet where I don't have to think about it. Uh, the last time I was working on this, <laughs> one of the cats was on my lap and kept playing with the yarn. So I just gave up and took a nap instead. So yeah, this is like all of the crochet, actual crochet that I have to show you guys, but hopefully um, next, early next week, I will show you guys what I've done over the weekend, what I've yet to, to, to do over this weekend. Now I did go to a couple of thrift stores and I found a couple of books. I really don't have much luck finding crochet books at thrift stores, but these two were only 25 cents. And so of course I got them since I saw them. The two books that I picked up for a quarter each are these are Better Homes and Gardens. Uh, crochet and knitting. I do not know how to knit yet. I wanted to learn this summer, but it just did not happen um, one day. And then this one here is Forever Favorites Crochet. I'm sorry if that's a little bit glary. Um, I, I grabbed them off the shelf because I don't usually see crochet books. And then I was flipping through them and I love like the vintage pictures that you get in some of these old books. Let's see when the copyright is. This is this is a 1984 copyright and because of the fall in love cow that i did i do pay more attention now to doilies and crochet thread stuff so who knows there might be something in here that i'll actually do well right away there are some doilies i don't know when i'll be using crochet thread again but i will <laughs> I will someday. I'm probably not going to make these. Isn't he cute? It's a cute little boy though. Um, I don't know. Not really my style. I don't really wear checkers. Uh, let's see. What else do we have in here? Okay. We have this. Now I won't be making this maybe on a much smaller scale, but well, for one, our table is rectangle and for two, the cats would probably snag it or lay on it. And the same thing with this. That's a lot of detail. <laughs> that is a lot of detail. Yeah, in the first sentence it says, crocheting a bedspread is admittedly a challenge. Well, especially when with crochet thread like this. I mean, I assume it's crochet thread. It, it looks like it is. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I just think it's fun to look at these old books. And oh, there's a couple of pillows. Maybe, you know, maybe one day. Oh, I like this picture. This is interesting. It's a um, crochet afghan on a wheel. I'm not sure why it's on a wheel outside, but a lot of detail there. 
that's this one. Let's see what is in the other book, which is crocheting and knitting. When is this copyright? The pages are a little bit yellowed. I like that. 1977. This book is older than I am. 1977. And let's see what we've got. Oh, that's very pretty. Afghans. There is another lacy tablecloth. I do like that. There's some placemats. I don't know if you guys see. I'm not very good at showing off, showing books. Oh my goodness, this reminds me of Scrooge. It's the right year, or the right time of year for it. The bed curtains, like, it just reminds me of one of the old Scrooge video or movies. I kinda wanna watch that now. This one's pretty. Oh, one more I'll show you guys. This is Grandmother's Flower Garden Afghan. I really like the colors in that. That is a possibility. Maybe someday. Someday I'll make something out of these books. But for a quarter, it's okay that they can just sit on my shelf here at home, right? <laughs> I also found some yarn. Just a little bit of yarn. It was on a different day. The day that I bought those two books, I looked through the yarn and they had like three huge bins of yarn. I had never seen so much yarn at a thrift store, but it was all, almost all baby weight yarn. And almost all of it was pastel colors, pinks and whites. And then they had like some really bright reds, but I really didn't need any of that kind of yarn. So I didn't buy any. And then I went back a few days later to see what they had. And I found this bag here. I haven't opened it yet. It was 60 cents. Not bad. Um, it's blue. <laughs> that's all about, that's about all I know about it. So I'm going to tear into it with you guys. Good. It doesn't smell like anything. It smells like plastic bag. It's so soft. It is so soft. Um, it almost looks like a sock, sock weight yarn, which I'm not too familiar with, but you can make some really pretty amigurumis with this because I, I won't be making socks. So yeah, I, it's a lot softer than I thought it was going to be. And I don't know exactly what it is, but for 60 cents, why not? I was also gifted some very soft yarn. At church, we do this thing called Secret Sister, kind of like a secret pal thing we, that my mom used to do in the 80s, like a secret Santa, basically. Um, and my secret sister, who is wonderful, we had like the reveal, so I know who she is. Anyways, she's wonderful. And she got me this. Look at this. This is Respun Thick and Quick, 100% recycled polyester, very, very soft. Um, when I saw it, I was expecting it to feel kind of like um, like an acrylic-y, like, oh, that kind of you can get at Michael's for 99 cents, you know, but it is so much softer than that. It's from Lion Brand. I have never heard of this yarn before. This, the color is called Raven, which is so beautiful. And let me see a little bit about this. There's 12 ounces here. 223 yards, which like, that means nothing to me. I don't measure my yarn at all. I don't measure it. Um, I go by like big skein or little skein. It looks like an animal. Like I thought it might be wool or something or a wool blend, but it's not. It's acrylic. I have no idea what I'm going to make. <laughs> I don't know. Something cool. So I got that. And then first I'm going to show you the pattern that I bought and then I'll show you the yarn that I got um there is this pattern that I was looking at on Etsy and then Briella saw me looking at it and she's like oh you need to make that and that's all the convincing I needed right now this this pattern I bought a pattern bundle and I will link the Etsy shop down below this is by the Projectarian Orbit the dragon this is the expansion pack and then this is the regular um, Orbit the Dragon, I guess you, you get two patterns. So there's this one. And then, I'm trying to make sure you see, can see it. And then there's this one. 
how adorable are these dragons um this the pattern is five dollars and then there's also like this bonus thing with tips and tricks i first heard about the project Harian from caroline from caroline um for the love of crochet because she made this rabbit that is just awesome and if you go to the project Harian on etsy you'll you can see like all of her patterns they're just really they look hard <laughs> they look like a challenge and I am up for the challenge. I want to start these this weekend, but I probably won't because I need to finish. <laughs> Remember my goal of trying to finish all of the projects that I had started by the end of the year? Well, it's not the end of the year yet. <laughs> we'll see what I can get done. This will be my incentive if I get some stuff done. Um, I might start with this dragon here. I don't know, they're so cute. But I, I bought some yarn to go along with those patterns. This yarn you may have seen if you watch Angelia. Hi Angelia from Crocheting House Mouse because for her blanket that she did, the ice cream blanket, she used the Red Heart Super Saver. This, it's not, I don't know, would you still say it's new? I think it's new. This one is Bubblegum Speckle. Bubblegum Speckle. I got two because I'm not sure how big that dragon is going to be. I think I'm gonna use this yarn to make this dragon right here. I am excited about, well, about using any new yarn, but this is so pretty. So guess what other color I bought for the other dragon? For this dragon here, I bought the light blue speckle. I think that will look really, really cute, this dragon in this yarn. So yeah, I'm excited about that. I mean, I love doing new projects and using new yarn, but um, gotta get my other stuff done first. <laughs> and one more thing to talk about, which is crochet related with you guys. Um, someone had commented on the video that I made, the hognose snake, and I'll link that video down below, which will have this pattern. It's a free pattern. It escapes me right now who the pattern's by. But um, I just took the snake pattern and then I created a hog nose by folding up the nose a little bit and stitching it. And they wanted a closer look. So I am going to make this one into a hog nose snake. Now I made this a while ago and I was gonna fix the eyes because it was supposed to be the eyes right there. Totally doesn't look, look like the eyes, but it's a good, light color so I'm gonna record just a snippet of me sewing the nose because what I do is I fold the nose up and it's kind of hard to show you guys with this angle but um I'm gonna use a brighter colored yarn so you'll see my stitches and if you want to make a hognose snake you can make a hognose snake that's a Briella thing I never even heard of hognose snakes before so yeah I'm gonna just I just kind of squish it down and then <laughs> stitch it however it'll stay so yeah so this will be that'll be at the end of the video which <laughs> I think this might be the end of the video now I don't know um weather wise here in the upper peninsula there's really no snow <laughs> I'm looking at green grass right now it's really really weird usually we have a few feet of snow on the ground and it's kind of rainy and drizzly today so the kids want to go sledding, but can't really do that in the grass. And my Christmas decorations are all up. Um, I might, I'll show you guys that in my next video because this one's getting pretty long. So that is what I have for you guys today. Um, I hope you guys are doing well and I am going to try very hard to see you guys soon. Hopefully with a lot of crochet or at least some crochet because my fingers are just itching to make some amigurumis. Um, bye everybody. Okay, so we're going to turn this guy into a hog nose snake. So it has a little a bit of a hog nose, I guess you'd say. I am no snake expert. I am gonna just use some pink so you can see what I actually do and I just use a regular tapestry needle. Now usually you would obviously make this or use the same color yarn because you can't tell on the brown one because I used the same color yarn. To thread this 
All right, so what I did was I went underneath to kind of just attach the, the yarn and then um, we'll hide this string with a knot. But all I did was, like this is a regular snake head, just, just the little snake head there. And I pushed it in. You can feel where you make the, the nose where you start the magic ring right there. And I just kind of fold it. So if this is like the first row where the magic ring is, the second row, the third row is where I come up with my yarn. And that's where I tuck it. And then what I do is since it's tucked, it's kind of, I don't know, almost at the top of the third row. Then I come to the top of the second row and I come down and sometimes you have to hold this so it won't pull through or you can tack it. But see how you got like a little bit of a, a little bit of a nose going and then I push it and I just smoosh it and I do whatever works. I go over one stitch and then I come back to about where I was before and I pull it and you're getting a little bit of a hog nose. And then what I do is I turn it so it's facing me and I just, what I have done so far is I've kind of secured the yarn. I just go from like the, th the third row here, one, two, three, and into the second row, I guess you could say. <laughs> There's really, it's not like really a rhyme or reason. I just do what works. So it's starting to pull up there and then I'm just gonna go maybe to the fourth row here and come back down to the second row and give it a pull, a nice tug. I just keep the sewing um, until, <laughs> until it makes a hog nose. Uh, do whatever works for you. See how messy that is? That's why you would do the regular color. You just kind of pull it. Sometimes you gotta fold it a little bit more. If you really want a big hog nose, or a more pronounced snout, I guess you could say, then really fold it down. And I'm just gonna go under, and then I'm gonna take it from the second row and then try to get where I just came in. So take it from the second row, and from there. Just keep sewing it and squishing it. The, what I do is I squish it with my thumb down and then I just keep sewing it. It also works if you go all the way through the head if you want to. You can do that. Like I'm going all the way through the head just to make it kind of stay folded. That's the key is just folding up that snout and I am just sewing anywhere now just trying to get that hog nose. And then we see we have the, the hog nose go in there. Show you on the side. Something like that. This one looks much better because again, it's brown yarn on brown yarn. It's not pink yarn on crazy variegated yarn. So that's what I do um, when you get it, how you like the nose, which is totally up to you. I mean, I think that's, that's a pretty cute hog nose. You can tell what it is. If you're a snake person, like if I, well, I'm really not a snake person. I have no idea about different kinds of snakes. But anyway, when you go to end it, put, Bring your needle down, and this is what you, you usually do in like amigurumis and stuff, uh, in case you don't know how. Then, so it's coming through where I first inserted it, and then you will make a knot. And then I'm not, well, I'll, I guess I'll do it. I wasn't gonna do it, but I can just cut this out. You make a knot, and then you, 
This is how I do it. You can do it however you want to. But I always just cut it to the same length. That way it's easier to get both yarns threaded. You can use a bigger needle too for this part if you need to, if you're having trouble getting your yarn through. <laughs> like, I got one. <laughs> I got one. All right, let's get the other yarn in there. So then once both um, yarn ends are in the needle, threaded through, you take your needle and you make sure you're holding on to the yarn so it doesn't go off of the needle. And right where you first inserted both of them, where they're coming out, you can hold right back in and then you go anywhere. And that hides the knot. Let me pull it up. And it's hidden. Then you clip this off. And you've got your yarn hidden. It's secure. And then there's a little hog nose snake.